every goal, every game, every kick of the ball live. From BBC Radio Scotland, this is Sports Sound. Hello there, I'm Richard Gordon and you're listening to a football podcast from the BBC. Today's podcast comes from the Sports and Programme of Saturday the 21st of May. It was Scottish Cup final day at Hampden Park, Rangers taking on Hibernian. It was the Edinburgh side who came out on top, but there were incredible scenes at the end of what had been a dramatic 90 minutes. Our commentator was John Barnes. The full-time whistle sounds and Hibernian celebrates! They've won the Scottish Cup final by three goals! Some Rangers fans being ushered back at the other end as well, behind the barriers, as a number of the Hib supporters go on to the park, run towards the Rangers end to taunt the opposition fans. This is not how Hibs wanted to make history. The stewards are failing to deal with it at the moment, as a number of Rangers supporters are coming on to the field and now they're jumping the barriers and there's fights breaking out as Rangers players try to make their way off the park it's Bedlam inside Hamden Park the Hibs players are celebrating with some of the fans but there's Rangers supporters on the pitch as well away over on the far side there's one fan lying flat out on his back not sure what quite happened to that gentleman but there's fights breaking out there as well between more supporters in the edge of the 18 yard box but this is not the ending the Hibs were wanting as Alan Stubbs becomes only the second English manager to win the Scottish Cup the name of Hibs and his players will go down in Hibs folklore but so will be the scenes post-match as fights still continue to carry on there's even beach balls on the pitch the police are not dealing with this whatsoever at the moment as more Rangers fans stream onto the park some Hibs supporters retreat as the police eventually and the stewards try to bridge the gap between the two sets of supporters but more and more Hibs fans have made their way out from the east end of the ground onto the pitch they're looking to celebrate but they don't realise what's going on up the other end of the pitch there's been photographers stools been thrown as well as more police arrive well this is incredible scenes and it sets back Scottish football a good 35 years the final finished Rangers 2 Hibernian 3 an incredible afternoon here at Hampden Park thank you so much to John for describing all the excitement the drama, the action as it unfolded And now we stand in the gantry here at the South Stand at Hampden Park and we witness scenes that we thought we had left behind generations ago as a photographer's stool just gets thrown right across the pitch and lands among the fans there. It was just a few Hibernian fans initially and that trickle became a stream and then suddenly they were absolutely everywhere. Now a real throwback because the mounted police have emerged from down below us to the left there are 20 or so officers on horseback and they are now making their way onto the pitch and their job will be to slowly push that line of Hibernian fans back the Rangers fans, there are fewer of them certainly on the pitch over to our left the Hibernian fans cover the whole of the pitch to our right hand side and across maybe a third of the pitch over the halfway line there were fights, 
there were scuffles, there were certainly people getting injured and hurt down there, no question about that. The goal mouth off to our right, like, ha like Wembley Stadium all those years ago, has disappeared. The Hibs fans were climbing up in it. I can just see the top corner of it. I can see Hibernian fans on it. The crossbar is broken, the net is being ripped apart. And everywhere you look, you're keeping your eye out for little outbreaks. I think they've probably quelled the fighting now, the police. Various fans are being taken away by the police, by the stewards. The Hibernian fans are being moved back by that line of police on horseback, back towards the halfway line. There's another surge across to the right-hand side towards the Rangers fans in the north stand across there. But everywhere you look, off to the right, it's green and white, and Hibernian fans, should be celebrating a first Scottish Cup victory in 114 years. And it's all turned sour. The scenes that the Scottish FA could not have imagined here at the National Stadium, Hampden Park. There's a whole heap of Hibernian fans on the far side. They're goading a section of the Rangers fans. And they are just uh, moving, being moved back now. The line of police right across the halfway line. And they are pushing those Hibs fans bit by bit. And the Rangers fans who were on the pitch, they are being ushered back across into the stands off to our left-hand side. Jason Cummings, as he usually just emerged from the pitch, he was down there, he's just been wrestled away by uh, one or two of the stewards. Absolutely incredible scene. Still one or two him, Sassy, Liam Fontaine is down there as well. He's been moved by the stewards, very keen to get the players away. And those Hibernian fans are moved further and further back into their own half. This is going to take some considerable time to get the pitch cleared, so it will be some considerable time before the presentation will take place. Jake Young down pitch side. Oh, Richard, uh, the last time I saw this, it was 1980, the right final, the old firm final. Scenes down here, absolute disgrace. I'm in the, just at the mouth of the tunnel, and the Hibs players, I, I think most of them have counted them back in here, but just the last couple coming in there, Jason Cummings, Fontaine, Lee Fontaine as well, Dylan McGeer, it's joys of moments of celebration, but utterly bemused at what's going on. There was... Rangers players engaged with the Hibs fans. Dean Shields in particular was wrestling with two of them. The security people have been in. Leanne Dempster's down here now, the chief executive of Hibs, with a look of real distress on her face. This, of course, should be a moment of utter joy for Hibs winning the cup after all those years, and yet it has ended in headlines that will be screamed around the world. Leanne looks totally distressed, trying to suggest to the police to push these fans back the police have found, sort of formed a cordon the width of the pitch now they're moving the, the Hibs fans to the east end of the ground trying to get them to go back into the uh, seated areas there can be no presentation of course when it's in this state of disarray uh, but scenes that have shamed Scottish football absolutely the Hibs players are now I think have all been secured within the dressing room Liam Fontaine, in fact the Hibs players have come out now uh, just around me, uh, in a moment or two we'll try and have a word or two with them, I, I think the amusement all around here, it wasn't the time for interviews uh, at all obviously I'm um, just trying to have a look and see if we can pick out one or two well, of the players we'll, we'll come back, I've seen Lewis Stevenson's only just making his way off the pitch, he's been yeah. out there, he's yeah, been uh, stuck in the midst of it all uh, they, they've got a sign up on the, the big electronic scoreboards please message, please clear the pitch I'm not sure that'll be entirely effective, to be perfectly honest. But the police are doing their job. They are getting those uh, fans back further and further. The players, Hibernian players, are down in the tunnel there. Uh, Chicks in amongst them, you've got Fraser Fivey yeah, with you. Fraser, uh, well, first of all, let's talk the football. Maybe we should leave the football. This is not how you wanted to celebrate, is it? No, the, the fans got a bit over excited coming on the pitch, but <clears throat> obviously we're doing our best to get them off the pitch so we can get out there and celebrate, but... The enjoyment they've had, the, the way they've supported us this season and the backing we've got today um, has been fantastic. So, um, for them coming to pitch, I think it's been a, a good while till they won a cup. So, oh, we know that. Uh, maybe they got a bit carried away, but I can't really blame them. So, I just get them off the pitch as soon as we can, then we can, we can start celebrating. Okay, talked about the football match, did you, always, did you think it was going to extra time there? Uh, you know what? I had that feeling at half time, we came in 1 1. Um, I don't know what it was, I had that gut feeling we could do it. And I think everybody was exact same, but to do it in that style and last minute of play. And to be fair, we, the gaffer said yesterday and Thursday and on Tuesday, 
set plays is going to be massive for us because they're going to have I don't know how much possession they have today maybe 80, 70, 75% but um, we worked in set plays throughout the week massively and uh, came off it came off does that compensate for not going up? Um, what a feeling check it is you don't really care anymore uh, to be honest we want a promotion we'll go for it again next season but I just want to enjoy it today and enjoy winning that cup it's, it's fantastic for the club it's been, the boys are excited it's great for the manager it's been great for us all season and um, you can listen to these fans it's unbelievable it's going, what a day it's going to be thanks Fraser enjoy yourself thanks very much Fraser Fivey playing his part out there there are 10 police on horseback lined up across the halfway line here at the National Stadium Hampton Park a further 15 yards or so into the half off to our right there is a line of police stretching from a one perimeter wall right across and bit by bit those Hibernian fans are being pushed further back towards their own stands but still many many of them down there on the pitch and in scenes that are reminiscent of that 79-80 Old Firm Cup final here at Hampden Park with the uh, bottles being thrown with fighting all over the pitch and which led to stringent measures being put in place in terms of security for Scottish football so still the police try to sort, sort things out let's get back to the chick Leanne Dempster the chief executive of Ibernian with him well, Leanne first of all congratulations you were confident for the victory would come I need to deal with this what's happening behind us first of all your reaction I'm just overcome with the whole day chick to be honest I'm just taking everything in at the minute so obviously it's a fantastic day for the club so I'm just delighted at the moment the um you know, this, this, the last time the football, the occasion to get you after all the weight, it's a huge lift for him. I, I get all that. And the players want to get out there and celebrate. Absolutely, just talk to Fraser Fivey. It's just an absolute shame that it's gone this way. Do you, uh, do we, what's your reaction to the fans? You can take this to bits after the game, Chick. Let's, let's take it to bits after the game. I mean, I actually never saw much of what happened. I was so upset upstairs when it was all going on. So uh, I came down. Nobody wants to see anything like that. Uh, but I, I, I want to talk about the game at the minute. You can ask me about this later on when I know more about what's happened. OK, fair enough. The players, I think, are going to get out now and maybe get some uh, civilised celebration with the fans. They're all gathered around us. Um, you must be proud of them. And, and as you said before the game, it goes a long way to making up for not getting promoted. I'm very proud of them. I'm proud of this club. Everybody who's worked really hard in the last two years, this is... This is just wonderful, and uh, I hadn't really prepared anything to say, but we're just going to enjoy this, and the guys deserve it. I'm so pleased for them, okay. pleased for Alan, pleased for John. Brilliant, Leanne, fantastic. She deserves everything. Uh, John Dillon, John the assistant Dillon, manager, assistant just manager. joining yeah. in there. Yeah, well, what, what, there's absolute bedlam down here, Leanne. I'll let you go, but yeah. uh, I'll let you go, Leanne. But just, I'm going to try and get out. So there's absolute bedlam. What's happening here is. There's a, a the, the, the champagne has been popped in the, in the tunnel entrance here, uh, deep in there somewhere. I think it's Alan Stubbs. are trying to get a word of them. The, the players are desperate, as you might imagine, to get out there. I'm just going to try and try and get a word of them. Anthony, can I get? Congratulations! How uh, well done that was. Um, first of all, shame about all this. I know you want to get out there and celebrate. What a game for you, though. Yeah, it's, it was unbelievable, pal. Just a special, special day, and just so happy for everyone at the club, and obviously for ourselves and for the fans. It's just something I'll get down in history thought you were going to get a hat trick at one point so did I I probably could have but uh, it's not okay yeah, the whole thing was about winning the game that's all that matters this is the most I've covered a lot of Scottish Cup finals I've covered a lot of Scottish Cup finals in my days first time it rain champagne in the, in the tunnel I mean yeah. it's a shame about the, play, the, the fans coming onto the park yeah it? but listen we're not going to let that deflect in the game that's that's just you know a small minority I hope I didn't see what, what went on but listen it's not going to damper our spirits we're delighted with the result today but you can see the, the atmosphere around the place it's, it's just sinking in and it's, uh, we're just looking forward to celebrating it. And I think your own performance today maybe sent me a message to the new manager of Celtic that you, you might win even another Yeah, yeah, I hope so. You know what I mean? I wanted to finish the season on a high. And, you know, I felt the last few weeks uh, my game was coming back, but I was I was happy with my performance today. Good man, Andrew. Thanks. Right, thank you. You know, like Chick, I've covered many a Scottish Cup final, and normally I'm up here and I'm watching our pitch side reporter running around the pitch trying to chase down players to do interviews. He's got them corralled in the tunnel down there as we wait. And still the police, now there can't be more than a couple of hundred or so Hibs fans still in the pitch. But as they clear the pitch, 
What is obvious is that a number of them have taken fairly significant souvenirs away with them because there are huge gouges now all across that half of the hand and pitch that was uh, relayed so very recently. Uh, lots of Hibs fans taking them home and now, bit by bit and one by one, those fans be pushed back into the stands. I think down there, back in that scrum again, Alan Stubbs with Chick. Yeah, I managed to find the Hibs manager, Alan. Um, well, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you've eradicated, we'll never again mention... <laughs> 1902. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel? Well, at least I won't have to answer that question next season. Um, now, listen, it's it's a it's an unbelievable day. I haven't said nothing before the game, but I've I've had a funny feeling that we were gonna we were gonna do this today. I I had a, a really weird dream a few probably about six weeks ago, and we were gonna win this game 3-1. I wasn't far away, but you know I just had a funny feeling. Just sometimes, deep down in your gut, you, you get a you get a, a good feeling about something, and um, I, I, I had it. I, listen, I might be talking absolute nonsense, but that's what that's what I felt, and I'm delighted for everybody at the club. You know, the players, the board, the fans. You know, it's a it's a great club, uh, to, the, the great people to work for, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure that they're going to experience something that that's been too long uh, in waiting just a shame about all the scenes behind me isn't it yeah it, it is and we don't condone that you know no one wants to see that I can understand but I don't condone it you know it's there's there's relief excitement emotion a bit of stupidity and all in, in, in all that and I can I can I can I feel for them you know but you know, we want to. We obviously want, want to celebrate this now, and we want to celebrate it with them. Yeah, that, that's the point. You know, the players are gathered around this year. I'm another suit ruined with champagne. Yeah. I mean, always the champagne, but man, else. But I mean, the, the players are now corralled in the tunnel. They want to go out there. Yeah. The fans want to see them. Yeah. And, and what they've done is denied that opportunity. No, that's 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 it. Now, you know, we want to. You know, we we've we've waited 114 years for this. <laughs> You know, and, and the last thing we want is to be deprived of going to lift the cup and celebrate in front of our fans. You know, so I just wish they'd get off the pitch and get their asses off there as quickly as possible so we can get on it. Well, we'll apologise for everyone who's offended by that kind of language, but, uh, but uh, you know, for yourself, does it, does it make up for not um, going up? It doesn't make up for it, but it, it's a very close second. You know, our, we, we, never, we never got what we wanted, and that was our main aim, promotion. But... With, with the history that surrounded the club and, and the, the weight that we've had for this, you know, I know, I don't know about whether it was 50 50, but I know probably 60 40 that some, some of these would have wanted this today rather than promotion. Yeah. It's, uh, you must be content. I mean, I said to you before the game, you told me about a dream you had, and you, I was accusing you of not being able to sleep the last yeah. few weeks oh. as well, so you were sleeping well. No, I was. I was. You know, I'm, when you've got, I've said all along. I, I, t I totally believe in these players. You know, and they've they've been on the on the back of some some really bad luck over the last couple of months. And you know what? It, 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 it hurts me and it hurts them when people question their character and whether they've got bottle. You know, when they haven't got a clue what it's what, what it's like to walk out in front of you know 20, 30, 40, 50 thousands. You know, it takes it takes a bottle just to step onto the pitch. Never mind playing it, you know. And they, they can go and have a, an unbelievable night tonight, you know, with the blessings of me. They can go and get drunk. They can go and have a fantastic summer, you know, because they deserve it. And I, I hope it's the bloody last time that I have to answer the question about bottle and hipster and character, because it's an absolute utter nonsense. Remove hipster from the di from the dictionary now. Well, we can replace it with Dunny. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations, Al. Stops down there with Chit. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm delighted to see now the pitch has been cleared. All the fans are back in the stand. Still, there are uh, police on horseback along the halfway line there. There is that line of police across the pitch there as well. Uh, the players, the Hibernian players, were down in the tunnel. They just disappeared. Some Rangers fans still in the stadium, no doubt hoping to see their favourites go up and get the runners-up medals. The referee and his assistants are waiting down there. They're waiting, of course, to go up. But first and foremost, or top of the pile, it will be those Hibernian players who will eventually get the chance to go up and end 114 years of hurt 
for their football club. Let's get back down to Chick. Yeah, Richard, they've been now removed from the tunnel that the Hibs players have now been taken back to their dressing room. Um, they're, they're making a statement down here that there'll be no trophy presentation until every single person is off the pitch. They've cleared the entire tunnel area. Um, for, for our listeners who are not aware of the area down here, there's an open area and then the, the, there's gate, there are doors which, uh, behind which uh, the lead to the dressing room said uh, the Hibs, in this case, to the left. Rangers to the right and the players have been taken all the way back uh, to the, the dressing room, the respective dressing room. I, I, don't, I don't know if Rangers will even come out with their runners-up medals. There's been no sign of them. There's a lot of anger from, the, from them as well. A frustration, you can imagine all the emotions that are running very high indeed. Um, but at the moment, uh, we may be some time, as I understand it, for okay. either team, uh, particularly Hibs, come out to, to collect the Scottish Cup. Well, the stewards of police have done their job in the respect of getting the pitch cleared again. There's no question about that. All the Hibernian fans back in their place. I'm not sure they're back where they started, to be perfectly honest. Quite a few of them, I think they've just landed up back in there. But they'll all be of one mind tonight. The boys and girls and men and women here supporting this football club who have the most incredible triumph to celebrate this evening there will be relief, there will be joy there will be tears, I've absolutely no doubt for many of them who will have been here on handling occasions over the years and have seen their team fail to deliver in this competition, not today they showed great fortitude in coming back from a goal down with just 10 minutes to go to score twice in front of their own fans in the goal mouth off to our right the goal mouth that now sees a broken goal frame as we look across the post to the left is almost upright the crossbar broken in two sitting at a weird angle and then trailing off behind where the other goal post has been snapped and we can see just the top the bottom foot or two of it still in the grounds the net lies there the pitch is scarred where fans have taken their mementos, their souvenirs away with them. And now the Hibernian fans back in the stands, now singing and now waiting for those players to reappear. Um, I would imagine there'll be quite some considerable time before you can persuade all of them to leave this stadium this evening. Back down to check now. Uh, as I understand it, Richard, yeah, that you, you know, picking up what you said there, Hibs players still addressing them, they won't come out till they've calmed down. I understand, I've been told that Rangers will not be out to accept the runners-up medals, whether they feel that would antagonise the situation and the, and the range of, uh, the Hibs fans rather, who are still inside Hamden at the moment, you can hear them in the background but I'm told that Rangers will not be re-emerging now, as we look around there are a, hand, a handful of uh, Rangers fans still in the stadium, some up beside you where you are in the, in the commentary uh, the, the top upper tier of the commentary area is only a handful around the stadium but um, I'm told that Rangers will not re-emerge, Hibs remain in the, dress, in the dressing room and they're just waiting for all this to settle down. Um, and I have to say, I'm just standing beside the, the referee, um, uh, Stevie McLean, and his John Beaton's officials, and, uh, Andrew Dallas, who's behind the goal. All of them, they're absolutely stunned by what happened, but they were all safe and sound uh, within that uh, almost a riot. Next door, I wouldn't say a riot, but that situation on the part, uh, they're all safe and sound, but uh, I think they're all a bit shaken up by what happened. And, Andrew Dow said he's never seen anything like that in his whole life. That's because he was too young to be here in 1980, when I remember it very well indeed. Yeah. Well, I see the stewards moving check and others away from that tunnel area. The referee and his assistants are down there. They're waiting. They'll be uh, first up then. They'll get the call to go up and get their medals from this afternoon. The stewards are um, just trying to get things organised down there. Certainly, there's no question the pitch has finally been cleared. What are we now? Um, almost quarter past five. So it's some... 25 minutes or so since the game ended, since the dramatic winning goal from the captain, David Gray, who buried that header beyond the Rangers goalkeeper, the Rangers defence, and then raced off to the corner of the stadium there and was uh, deluged by his teammates and by Hibernian fans down in the corner because that was a moment where they knew the Cup final was won at the Scottish Cup after all these years, would be heading back to Easter Roads. There ensued those scenes initially of celebration, which became somewhat ugly. And at one point, virtually the whole pitch was covered in fans, mainly Hibernian fans, certainly some Rangers fans on there too. There was some fighting 
the police had to get in there. They got the police and horse back out to try to quell things, to calm things down. Eventually they did so, they pushed the fans back and got them all back into the stands. And much of Hamden still bathed in sunshine as we await for the Hibernian players to emerge. I can only imagine the kind of scenes of celebration that must be taking place in that dressing room down below us right now. You might remember not long before kickoff, we looked across, we looked at the fans, we saw a huge banner being held up by the Hibernian fans and it said, time for heroes. Well, after 114 years, they have found their heroes. The names of those players will go down in the annals of this club's history. Incredible, isn't it? Conrad Logan, if you'd heard of him just a few weeks ago, came in, played in that Scottish Cup semi-final. It was immense against them, the United. And has, uh, well, I think he missed one game, but has all but kept his place in the team since then. And he will now be remembered as one of those Hibernian legends. The men who finally, at long last, brought the Scottish Cup back to Easter Road. I'm sure there will be, well, we know that there were plans put in place, obviously, for uh, the City Council to have celebrations in and around the, the city. The club will get details of that out in the uh, next wee while, I'm sure. Right now, all, anyone with any connection to Hibernia wants to see is David Gray down below us lifting that trophy and I doubt if this stadium will have heard such a roar as will greet that sight when it does eventually happen. I see uh, just down below us our TV colleagues uh, Liam and Craig Patterson were doing the the commentary there, Craig, I'm sure, will be feeling it. He's a Hibernian man through and through, played for the club, has got family connections to the club. He has suffered like so many Hibernian fans have suffered down the years. There will be a real sense of pride mixed in, of course, with, uh, well, disappointment, frustration at what happened in the wake of that final whistle. The recriminations will follow, the investigations will follow. But from a purely, purely footballing point of view, it is a day to be remembered by everyone with any affiliation to Hibernian Football Club. Back down to check. Well, the way to stretch it is they're hoping to get a presentation, as I can confirm, Rangers won't be out again. There will be a presentation, hopefully, to the Hibs team, but there will be no lap of honour. Um, as you said, traditionally, all these years have wandered, toddled around with players, they've decided for security issues today, the Pips players to come up where I'm standing here and uh, beside the officials, I just uh, as I said, the six officials on duty today, they're all fine, they're just standing monitoring events here uh, Leanne Dents have just come out of the tunnel we'll try and find out what's happening here, but uh, there will be no lap of honour, I'm told and they're hoping of the presentation the players, the Hibs players, still in the dressing room, so um, when they emerge, I'll let you know, but uh, that will be at, there'll be a presentation uh, and then the Hibs fans uh, will, will, will try to be ushered from the stadium uh, and set off to promote what I'm sure will be a giant party in Leith and various parts of Edinburgh. OK, Chick, we'll get back to you. Yeah, the message has come up on the big electronic screens. Police message, the presentation will take place shortly. There will be no lap of honour. And again, there'll be a sense of disappointment, I'm sure, from uh, Hibernian's point of view from the fans point of view but it's because they've been on that pitch because of what happened out there that it's uh, it's not going to be happening in terms of a, a lap of honour but there will be plenty of opportunities I'm sure in the future in the very near future for them to see the players and to see that uh, famous old trophy being lifted aloft by many of the Hibernian players so just waiting for the present day players to emerge waiting for the referee and his assistants to be given the nod to go up and get their medals as a result of uh, their performances this afternoon the Hibernian fans singing, many of them I'm sure just slowly sinking in what happened here at Hampden Park this afternoon, absolutely astonishing Murdo McLeod alongside is a man who's played for this club of course, helped coach this club knows what this club is all about and you'll know just what this afternoon yeah. has meant to them Obviously, it's a sad ending, everybody going on the pitch, Richard, but just fantastic for the club, absolutely fantastic. Every single one of these people in here today celebrating, they'll celebrate over the next half hour in the stadium, then they'll get back to Edinburgh and they'll just celebrate all night, all weekend. 
and just an awful long way to now to, to win the Scottish Cup and congratulations to Alan Stubbs and the rest of his team just a wonderful performance I thought they thoroughly deserved the victory Richard they pushed themselves they were behind to a wonderful goal from Rangers but they pushed themselves forward they never gave up and then to go all the way to the, the last couple of minutes they've lost so many games recently losing late goals and now they've managed to achieve that and scored a late goal themselves but just wonderful listening to the fans just now yeah I mean they're clearly overjoyed uh, many of them I'm sure in a, in a state of shock certainly huge relief all round that the long wait has finally been ended a lot, Richard, a lot of the fans wouldn't be aware of the, there was a bit of a problem in the left-hand side on the pitch. Yeah, the fighting. Yeah. No, the, most of the Hibs fans at the far end of the pitch were just busy taking down the, the goalposts and the nets and digging up the top. It's like Wembley. Yeah, From absolutely. The fans, it was. That, that's the, the way the, the Wembley pitch the goalposts were left there. But I don't think a lot of the Hibs fans were aware that there was right. a bit of a problem in this side. Mordo, I'm just watching. I see the monitor there that uh, the Hibernian players are making their way down the tunnel. The cameramen, the photographers just getting poised there and I can see the Hibernian players in the tunnel there on the screen just waiting for the shout to get back out there and you can just imagine the response there will be when that does happen and when they appear into view. There still seems to be a little bit of uncertainty but certainly the, uh, the players are gathered and they're desperate, absolutely desperate to get back out there. Now, finally, at... Uh, what about 22 minutes past five? I thought the referee and his assistants were about to be given the shout to go up and get their medals. That has been uh, delayed just a moment or two as well. There is real uncertainty. Yeah, they are finally being told. So the referee, Stephen McLean, and his uh, assistants make their way up. Uh, I look off to my left. There's, there might be 50 Rangers fans sprinkled around this stadium. They're not going to see their favourites back out again because the Rangers players will not be coming out to get their runners-up medals. The referee, Steve McLean, gets his medal and there's quite a smile on his face. You can just imagine how he must be feeling in the wake of that. Uh, somewhat bemused following the uh, events in the wake of the full-time whistle. But those officials are getting their medals. And down below us, I see an SFA official chatting with the Hibernian captain, David Gray. And those Hibs players are down at the end of the tunnel area. Alan Stubbs is there, his coaching staff are there. A number of players in their suits who weren't involved today. They're all waiting down in the Hamden Tunnel. They're waiting for the word that they can head up those steps. As the Hibernian fans around half this stadium, all of them stand in anticipation. All of them with their eyes peeled on the presentation area just down below us here in the Hamden South Stand. The Hibs players down below are starting to just get the songs going again. They're starting to jog up and down. They're bouncing up and down. The celebrations getting underway before the trophy has even been handed over with those players. The referee and assistant assistants have been given their medals. They've disappeared from view down below us again. And the squad, the Hibernian first team squad, are assembled at the foot of the stairs down in the presentation area the uh, Scottish FA representatives are standing there they are looking down at those players and there are smiles on the faces of all those Hibs players they know what they have achieved here this afternoon they know what history they have made and they just want that validation as out comes the Scottish Cup, the plinth is laid down on the desk. The silver trophy is placed on top of it. It's in place. Everything else is in place. And now, over the next few seconds, 114 years will be put to bed. The Hibernian captain, David Gray, leads his players up the steps into the presentation area he has a look almost of disbelief in his face his winner's medal is draped around his neck there are handshakes down below us David Gray turns to the Hibernian fans all around the stadium he waits as other players make their way up 
They're poised there in the presentation area. They were great turns. Hibernian winners of the Scottish Cup 2016. Ending 114 years of heart, the Scottish Cup is heading to Easter Roads. A massive reaction all around this stadium as the rest of the Hibernian players get their hands on the silverware. Lewis Stevenson and Paul Hanlon, Liam Fontaine, Conrad Logan, the unlikeliest of heroes. A one by one, it's handed down. Jason Cummings, young man with a huge career in front of him. Fraser Fivey, who we heard from off the back of the full time whistle. Disbelief in his voice. Dylan McGeer, kiss for the trophy and lifting it up high. And then Anthony Stokes, two goals this afternoon. A huge roar for the on loan Celtic striker. James Keatings came on as a sub and did his part. Martin Boyle didn't see the action this afternoon. Dan McGregor certainly did, and he's next to lift it aloft. And so it goes down the line. And so those Hibernian fans react to each and every player. Nicholas Gunnarsson coming on as a sub late on in the match. John McGinn, what an impact he's made throughout the season. And he ends it as a Scottish Cup winner. Liam Henderson just winding the Hibs fans up. Marvin Bartley in behind him. And then the backroom staff making their way through as well, right at the back of them. The man who perhaps will be proudest of all this evening, the Hibernian manager, Alan Stubbs. He's had a lot of disappointments throughout the course of a campaign which promised so much, but it has ended in triumph here in the hand and sunshine. As Alan Stubbs points to all those Hibs fans, and lifts the trophy in his right hand. A moment of mutual celebration around half of the national stadium. The green and white held aloft all around as the celebrations get underway in earnest. Sadly, no lap of honour, but there will be sunshine and leaf. as the anthem is belted out through the loudspeakers all around Hampden Park. The players have gone back up into the presentation area so that they can get a proper view and dry, drink in the scenes that are unfolding all around us as Hibernians celebrate their victory. seen so many high-profile matches, high-profile occasions. We've shared in the tears of joy for the national team for club size, the desperation, the disappointment, the defeats. And irrespective of who you support, you cannot help but be moved by an occasion like this as these Hibernian fans 
for the first time, each and every one of them, for the first time in their lives, know what it's like to be a Scottish Cup winner. sitting along the platform of the presentation area. Many of them have got their scarves up. They're joining in on the singing as well and holding those scarves aloft. celebration all around this stadium. Many, I'm sure, will be shedding a tear as they allow it all to sink in, to reflect on the fact that Hibernian, after all these years, have won the Scottish Cup and the electronic scoreboard says it all off to our right. It's got the big club badge on it and it simply says, congratulations, Hibernian. What an afternoon. Willie Miller, Stuart McCall, Mother McLeod being with us. Let, let's just get quick thoughts from them. I'm assuming we'll be getting to off the ball shortly, but of course there's been so much to uh, cover here at Hampden Park. Um, Willie, you've seen many things, many occasions. You've experienced so many highs and lows in this wonderful game of football. I would imagine this afternoon ranks pretty high. Richard, I'm um, going through emotions here, both high and low. I would like to congratulate Hibs for their performance and the resilience and fighting back to lift the trophy but since the final whistle then I didn't think I would see scenes like this ever again in my lifetime I think it's depressing for the game I think uh, it's something that we don't want to see I'm sure there'll be flash round the world the scenes that we're witnessing this afternoon from a footballing point of view fabulous game but after that I'm afraid to say fighting on the pitch Almost a riot situation. I'm hugely disappointed. I watched the goalpost just now. The line crumbled. I see hundreds of policemen out in the pitch. This is not what our game needs. So, a high in terms of the game. Delighted for Hibs. But I'm so sad for the game in general. Because it set us back decades, in my opinion. There will be investigations. There will certainly be recriminations. And it is something that a very football club are going to have to deal with. Just quickly back down the chick. Um, of course, uh, the Rangers fans, the few who did hang around, hoping to see the Rangers players get the runners up medals, chick. That didn't happen. Well, some of the scenes, as well as touched on at the end, were, were disgraceful. You would see from a point, uh, a high vantage point, in the, the commentary area. I'm going to try and get some reaction to the SFA in a minute, Richard, but certainly I think, uh, from what I understand within the Rangers camp, uh, suggestions and allegations that some of the players were assaulted by Hibs fans. Certainly I saw Dean Shields wrestling with two Hibs supporters. I'm told that there was an incident with a Hibs fan in a belt uh, with one of the Rangers players. Uh, I'm just going to try and progress the situation with the SFA, Richard. If you give me a moment, I may have further news for you. OK, yeah, I mean, clearly it is something that will be very fluid, it'll be very fast-moving. And it is, absolutely. Um, it's that kind of mixture, isn't it? As Willie said, it's the... I mean, Stuart McCall, you kind of experienced this at the end of last season, of course, with what happened at Fir Park. Oh, not on a scale of this. Not this scale, Listen, no. Football-wise, nobody can deny Hibbs' victory. I thought when they went 2-1 down, it was a test of the character, and they, and they proved that they had character and they had bottle. Two set plays, from Rangers' point of view, two great balls by Liam Henderson, but, you know, two free headers. Um, did Hibs deserve it? I think they did. I, I certainly do. I think first half, they had the better chances. I think Andy Stokes was 
the best man on the park. But after the game, I'm still sickened in my stomach because, as you say, from high up here, see the Hibs fans coming on, they come onto the halfway line and celebrate, and, but it just went all the way, all the way, and obviously the Rangers fans reacted, a small pocket on the left. And some of the scenes we saw down here that we can see from up here Horrible. in the penalty box, they, they were fighting and kicking people on the ground, both sets. It, but that, as Willie says, you don't want to see that. They don't want that to be remembered for. The scenes afterwards now when all the Hibs fans are back, Listen, if you ain't, you ain't got a heart or a soul, if you don't feel for them supporters, what they've been through this season and, and past couple of seasons, and they deserve probably this day and, and you know to celebrate it. But you know, from the, the other factor of it, you know, it was sickening sights, and you don't want to see police horses all over your, your national stadium going beamed all around the world. Yeah. Football-wise, terrific game. Hibs got what they deserved. Rangers just never really played to the potential, but character to Hibs. Incredible, absolutely incredible afternoon in so many ways. But quickly back to Chick just before we leave you, Chick. Yeah, no, John McGinn, who's just been up to collect his winner's medal. I saw you singing along, Sunshine Lee, John, the motion. Thick in the air, eh? I will, it's been a long season. Um, one, one over the piece, we've performed well, but uh, it was hanging over our heads. We had nothing to show for it, and um, we were determined today to, to get something to show for that, and we, and we eventually have. The manager told me he had a dream, and it's true still of Aussie Ardealers and others. He had a dream that Hibs were going to win it. 3-1 he said actually but did he mention his dream to you before that? No, nah, no, nah, I never said they just they just believed and uh, we all did throughout the week because um, people question a bottle or character all throughout the season and um, in the showpiece event of the, of the country's football we, to produce it in the last 15 minutes is, is something that can't be questioned and, and we're delighted yeah he says you've now deleted the word hibs it or two oh, words we must have hibs it today if we win the cup so. <laughs> you too, you too. And just a shame John these scenes then didn't allow you or denied you that for the winner oh it's disappointing um, you can see how uh, delighted the fans are obviously but we, we did rather they stayed in the stands so we could go and celebrate with them but um, I don't understand how we can't just go in the centre circle and, and celebrate but We'll have to do an end by the night. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Enjoy your night, John. You've got a great season. Well done. Cheers, Cheers bro. There you go. John McGinn, uh, we heard from a number of those Hibernian heroes throughout the course of the well, the last, uh, what would that be, 45, 50 minutes since the full-time whistle. Look, thanks to everybody who's been involved. Uh, it hasn't quite ended in the way that we would have imagined here at Hampden Park, as the boys have said. And I think everyone will say we all thought those days were long gone. There were some shameful scenes out there on that football pitch in the wake of the full-time whistle. And there will be a full investigation, there will be recriminations. Hibernian are certainly going to have to deal with it. It will be bittersweet for them because they have to do that in the wake of, uh, well, their most memorable triumph in such a long time. Quickly back to check again, I'm told. Yeah, I'm told there will be some SFA reaction within the next few minutes. I know, I presume, Richard, we're going to Tam and Stuart. Um, we'll try and bring you news of that during their programme, but the, the SFA have promised me reaction. They wanted the presentation and the Hibs players out the way, but there will be a statement about the scenes on the pitch within the next few moments from Scottish Football Association. Well, I'm sure Chick will feed that into the Off the Ball Saturday supplement for you. Um, the Hibernian fans... Maybe half of them have now left the stadium. And, of course, the others <laughs> want to hang on here. There will be incredible celebrations, I'm sure, across much of the capital this evening. Hibernian leaving Hampden Park as Scottish Cup winners for the first time. And, of course, lifting the trophy for the first time in 114 years. Absolutely astonishing afternoon here at Hamden. That's it. Thanks for listening. Remember to keep right up to date with all the very latest Scottish football news. BBC Radio Scotland 810 Medium Wave 92 to 95 FM online and on digital. And there's always comprehensive coverage of Scottish football at the website bbc.co.uk slash sports Scotland. The Scottish Cup Final on Sports Sounds. There's no substitute.